right, hello world. Once again, this is Wednesday. My name is Selma Edker. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. I'm married to Norman. This is my broadcast title. As you can see, I'm 69 years old. We live in St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. And there is one reason why we come on Periscope. And that is to share the love of Jesus with the entire world. God loves everyone. God is the creator of all mankind. God created the world and everything in it. And since God is the creator, he loves every person that is ever born. And because, hello there, Rasim42, welcome. Because God is love, he wants everyone to be able to go to heaven and escape the fires of hell. But God has one requirement that must be met. Everyone does not automatically get to go to heaven just because God is love. Hello there, Erball6061. Welcome. This is my name right here, Selma Edgar. I'm 69 years old and married to Norman. We are Protestant Christian missionaries. And our mission is to tell the world about Jesus. When we say we are Protestant Christian missionaries, that means that we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. And that is the only true revelation from God to man. The Protestant Christian Bible is our current English Bible. It was translated from Greek into English about 1500 A.D. And there's many other Bibles that have been written, but they are not the true revelation from God to man. There's also many books that say they interpret what the Bible means, but those are lies of the devil. God does not need someone else to write a book to interpret what he means. What God has said that is written in the Protestant Christian Bible, he revealed it to men over many centuries All right, let's see if that works. God, by the Holy Spirit, inspired all the men who wrote the several books in the Protestant Christian Bible. Satan is a liar and a deceiver. Satan originated as a beautiful angel in heaven his name was Lucifer, but because he was so beautiful, he got lifted up in pride and wanted to be worshipped as God. And he tried to dethrone God. He got several of the other angels to rebel against God with him, and so they were kicked out of heaven. And that is what separates people from God is their rebellious spirits refusing to believe in Jesus that separates you from God and you cannot enter into heaven if you are against Jesus. So on that note, that's what I'm going to be talking about today is people who are against Jesus. And I'm going to talk about some scriptures in the New Testament of the Protestant Christian Bible. Um, in the book of John first it tells about Jesus healing a lame man this is in uh, chapter 5 of the book of John 
Hi there, Susie DeBrea. Welcome. Jesus healed a lame man. He had been lame, it says, for many, many years. He couldn't walk. And so Jesus had compassion on this man and he healed him because Jesus is God. And God has the power to heal. But the religious leaders of that time when Jesus was here on the earth, they were jealous of Jesus. These religious leaders, thank you. These religious leaders persecuted Jesus because they saw such huge crowds of people following Jesus, listening to Jesus teaching. Jesus telling the people that he was the long promised Messiah, the Savior of the world. They saw Jesus healing people everywhere. And so these religious leaders who the people formerly had looked up to, they were now being more or less ignored. And they didn't like it. They were jealous of Jesus. Jealousy Hi there, Niturk66, welcome. This is my name, Selma Edker. So these religious leaders didn't like seeing Jesus heal people, and they tried to put a stop to it. And when Jesus healed this lame man, Jesus told the man to get up and take his bed and walk. And he had never been able to walk before. But because of Jesus' divine healing power, the man was healed and he got up and he walked and carried his bed. Now obviously that w couldn't and wouldn't be what we know as a bed today, but probably just a mat. And I understand that in some cultures, even today, they sleep on mats rather than beds like we have here in the United States and many other countries. So the man got up and he carried his mat and began walking. And because of that, the Jews hated Jesus even more and they wanted to kill him, especially because it was on the Sabbath day that Jesus healed this man. These religious leaders had made a rule. This was not from God. It was their own rule that you weren't supposed to do any work on the Sabbath day. And so they considered the man carrying his mat as work, which any, any person with common sense would know better than that. Well, on another occasion, and this one's in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, again, Jesus healed a man. This time, the man had a withered hand. He had one hand that was shriveled up and he couldn't use it. And the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders that I'm talking about, they, some of them were there, and they saw Jesus getting ready to heal this man. And they asked Jesus, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? They were trying to get him in trouble. Jesus had a very wise response. He said to those religious leaders, if you had a sheep, that fell into a pit on the Sabbath day, wouldn't you go out and rescue that ship, that sheep from the pit? And obviously, that would be work. And of course they would. They would not let an animal die just because it was a Sabbath day. Jesus said, isn't a man better than a sheep? And so, Jesus healed this man's hand. And these religious leaders were even more outraged. 
and it says they held a council meeting to try to figure out how they could destroy Jesus. Their stated reason was that he was breaking the laws of the Sabbath day, but the bottom line was they hated Jesus because he was now in the spotlight, so to speak. The people were looking up to Jesus instead of to them, and they were jealous. Hi there, dramatic Matin. Welcome. This is my name right here, Salma Etker. I'm in the United States, and I'm talking about Jesus and the religious leaders who hated him. These religious leaders had, at that time, they were still living under the Old Testament rules that God gave before, long before Jesus came. And those rules and commandments, I there, welcome, were still in effect until Jesus was crucified on the cross and arose and went back to heaven. And when that happened, hi, welcome. When that happened, then the Old Testament was, everything in the Old Testament was fulfilled by Jesus. And that's a whole other story. But these religious leaders knew the Old Testament laws, but they had made up a whole bunch more rules and traditions that they said was from God. And in fact, they were not. They just made them up. Just like this silly rule that it was not lawful to heal on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was, in, in the Old Testament days, that was the day of worship. But after Jesus came and was resurrected, yes, Yes, we are on Instagram. Um, we are on Instagram, and this is this is my husband, Norman Etker. You two are on YouTube and Facebook. This is his um, hashtag, Etker Norman, on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you. Also, we have a website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. So these religious leaders had made up a whole bunch more rules and traditions that they said the people had to follow. Um... Okay, I think you're saying you're from Turkey. I'm sorry I don't understand the rest of your sentence. So just as in the days when Jesus was here on earth and the religious leaders Sorry, I don't understand. The religious leaders, even in the time of Jesus, were making up rules, traditions, commandments, just stuff they made up. It was not from God. And Jesus said this about those people at that time. In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 8 and 9, Jesus said, you're in Istanbul. Welcome. Jesus said, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called them hypocrites. Hypocrites. That's what they were. They, Jesus was saying, these people are saying that 
they worship me. They say the words out of their mouth, but their heart is not in it. Because they don't believe me, Jesus is saying. They're worshiping me in vain because they're actually teaching man-made rules and commandments. Thank you for the hearts. So, today, in today's world, the same thing is happening. Most of the religious leaders of today, yes, we are on Facebook. Hello there, Abbey Road. Welcome. This is my name, if you haven't caught it yet. The religious leaders, many religious leaders in today's world are just like those religious leaders when Jesus was here on earth. I am 69 years old, if that's what you're asking. So, in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, hi, Sherry Lee. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. In the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, this book of 2 Peter, it was written by the Apostle Peter. And he warned, in this letter, he warned the people who were living back then, and the warning still applies to today. And the Apostle Peter said, as there were false prophets among the people in the Old Testament days, there will also be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the Sovereign Lord who bought them. Hello, Marco. Welcome. Bringing swift destruction on themselves, many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up. Those are words from the mouth of the Apostle Peter, saying there, there's always been false prophets, and there will continue to be false teachers, and they will make up stories. And in... And he's talking about church leaders who will do this to deceive the people, to get the people to follow them, or to, to belong to their church. All of these lies are from Satan. These false teachers who are not teaching the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ will tragically end up in hell if they never turn to Jesus and repent. These uh, I thought about I thought about something uh, when I was preparing this message and thank you. I welcome you. When I was preparing this message, I thought about uh, this rock and roll singer from many years ago. 
and I don't know if anyone out there knows the name of Elvis Presley. Um, he was a superstar in the rock and roll world many years ago. I think it was in the 70s when he died, I don't remember for sure. But the reason I'm mentioning that is it was a popular saying back then when Jesus, I mean when <laughs> when Elvis Presley was finished with a concert and the crowd was all waiting for him and when when the concert was over and Elvis had gone then they would announce it over the loudspeaker in the auditorium G, that Elvis has left the building and that was just something that everyone knew Elvis has left the building and I thought about that in relation to Jesus and this message and the reason <laughs> the reason is that in the majority of churches today I would have to say and it, this is a this is a terrible thing I would have to say that Jesus has left the building meaning that in most churches today the gospel message of Jesus Christ being the Savior of the world, being the only way of salvation, it is no longer taught. It's no longer preached. In many churches, Jesus is not even talked about. Or if he is, it's in a perverted gospel message. And that's why I'm saying Jesus has left the building. Jesus is no longer honored. Yes. Many churches. Hi there, Canfer Bond. Welcome. To be. Hi. To be a true Christian today and always in the past to be a true Christian means that you've been spiritually born again. That's what Jesus said has to be. I am here talking about Jesus, that Jesus alone is the Savior of the world, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Hi there, Ing1235, welcome. This is my name right here, Selma Edgar. Sadly, there's very few churches anymore where the true gospel message is preached. And I can say that because I know from personal experience. And so does my husband, Norman. I was raised in a church, yes, Sherry Lee, I work in an eye doctor's office, uh, part-time, about 20 hours a week. I, I, um, I've actually been with that company now for 18 years, and I was working full-time until we got married, and then I went to part-time. So I, I work all day Monday and a half a day on Thursday and a half a day on Saturday. Thank you. So, the world has bought into the lies of the devil. And anything that is preached besides the message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone is a lie of the devil. They are the commandments of men, which has been my my topic for today, the commandments of men, the 
the made up stories of men, the religious doctrines of men that are not from God and they will all take a person to hell. One of the biggest, and I mentioned this, always talking about the Roman Catholic Church because it is one of the biggest churches in the world, has, has so many adherents, and it's all doctrines and commandments of men. And it's a tragedy because there's millions of people that belong to the Catholic Church and they just blindly follow their teachings. One of the main things that Norman and I always mention is that Pope Pius IX, who, and the, his name was Giovanni Ferretti, and in the 1870s, he declared that he was infallible, meaning that he could never make a mistake about any religious doctrine. He also declared on his own that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a god. Those are two lies of the devil. Mary is not a god. She was a plain, sinful woman just like every other person on this earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything about the Catholic Church, thanks. Everything about the Catholic Church is commandments of men, not from God. In the Catholic Church, people go to the priest to confess their sins. That is a made-up doctrine by the Catholic Church. After Jesus came to earth, was crucified on the cross, and ascended back to heaven, the Bible says Jesus is now our great high priest. Jesus alone has the power and authority to forgive sins. Because it makes a way for them to keep on sinning. And so they think, well, I'll just go tell this, other man, tell this man. And they're just simply men. They're nobody special. They have no power or authority to forgive sins. But the people, the majority of people in the world, they want to just keep on living their sinful lives. And so they just follow these crazy rules. The Catholics also teach that when you die, you go to purgatory, which is a totally man-made story. There is nothing about purgatory in the Bible. And what's behind that is even worse. The Catholic Church teaches the people that when a loved one dies, and they go to purgatory, then their loved ones can come and pay money to the priest to pray for their loved ones to be able to get out of purgatory and go to heaven. So it's just a way for the Catholic Church to make money. That is so sad, Sherry Lee. It is so sad. The Catholic Church is deceiving people millions of people and it's all about making money. Another huge lie of the Catholic Church is transubstantiation. And that's a that's a big big word for a lie from the devil. And what that means is the Catholic Church yes Yes, Norman and I love all people because we have the love of God in our hearts for all the people of the world. And that's why we are on Periscope to tell you about Jesus. 
So this transubstantiation business is about taking communion, but the Catholic Church says that when you eat that wafer, you are actually eating the physical body of Jesus. And when you drank the wine, you are actually drinking his blood. That somehow that wine and that wafer becomes the real body of Jesus. Now think about how ridiculous that is. Not only that, the Bible clearly declares that we are not to drink blood. So it is a devilish doctrine by the Catholic Church. Everything about the Catholic Church is from the devil. It's all man-made. That is so sad, Sherry Lee. I just don't know how anybody can believe that. People don't read the Bible. That's, that's the biggest problem. People don't read the Bible for themselves. Or they would say the Bible doesn't say anything like that. The Bible says that Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Take communion in memory of me. Not eat my body and drink my blood. What a horrible thing. Commandments of men. The Seventh-day Adventist is another group that are considered to be Christians. But if you read their doctrine, it says they do not believe in hell. And Jesus clearly taught that hell is real. And the Bible clearly tells who will who will go to heaven and who will go to hell? So again, that's a made up, made up tradition by the Seventh Day Adventists. They also teach that you have to abstain from certain foods, which is Old Testament rules. It's not for today, just like the Jewish people. They still live by the Old Testament. They do not believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. The, uh, the Buddhist and the Hindus believe in reincarnation. That again, it's made up by man. The Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once. We die one time, and then we either go to heaven or to hell. More commandments of men. The Jehovah Witnesses, they have made up their own lies. Let me see, I have some notes on that. Let me see where that is. Here we go. Jehovah Witnesses. It's also known as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And they are known around the world. It is a cult. It was founded by a man named Charles Russell in the late 1800s. And they have some crazy man-made doctrines. They say that that God, that Jesus was only human, that he was not resurrected, he just became a spirit being somehow. And <laughs> they, it said, they believe Jesus returned to the earth in October of 1874, but nobody knew it except the Jehovah Witnesses. 
And Charles Russell, the founder of this crazy cult, said that in October of 1914, said that that date, October of 1914, would be the end of the age and the beginning of the millennium. They do not believe in hell. It's all man-made. Just a man-made cult. Yes. Yes. I believe that's true. Um, in the Old Testament days, obviously that was before Jesus came and it was before we have the written Bible. And so God spoke to his prophets. Now, I don't know whether that means the people heard God with an audible voice or if he just spoke the words into their minds. The Bible doesn't tell us but God definitely spoke to them. Yeah, there's some things, Sherry Lee, that uh, I wonder about too that the Bible is not clear on. So we just have to accept that God has given us the information that he wants us to know, what he feels is the most important. And I guess someday, Sometimes, um, yes, I would say, especially if, um, if we've done something wrong, if we've, as a born-again Christian, if we've slipped up and committed a sin without really intending to, the Holy Spirit would speak to our conscience and make us aware, uh-oh, you need to ask God for forgiveness for that. But also, Sherry Lee, there have been, has been several times when God has spoke to me, never in an audible voice, but I just heard the words in my mind and in my heart, and it was very clear just like there was a person speaking to me, but again, not in an audible voice. So maybe that's the way God spoke to Moses. I really don't know. But all of these false religions, yes, yes, um, and you know, that's why it's important for us to always be reading the, the New Testament to constantly be renewing our minds because it's easy to slip into our flesh, so to speak, and uh, not always respond to people in a Christ-like way. But the more we have the Word of God in our hearts and minds, the easier it is to, to be Christ-like. And uh, I know I can give you an example, Sherry Lee, at work uh, recently, I've had an ongoing situation with a co-worker who would not talk to me. Um, I've been working with her for several years and off and on over the years she's been difficult and uh, this last time uh, she wouldn't talk to me and just you know it was not a good situation and I began to be really resentful towards her for her attitude and of course that resentment is not from God that's not a God godly attitude and um, so after a time the, the situation was resolved and I asked and I realized how much resentment that I had in my heart and I asked God please forgive me and cleanse my heart and I mean immediately all that resentment was gone and I felt so free and now even though this person never, she 
she never asked for forgiveness or anything but now I truly feel that love of God in my heart for her so God is wonderful he's so forgiving and um, and it's just such a, a wonderful feeling to be free from those ungodly thoughts and feelings So, there's a lot of people, as you can see, that come on here that are only interested in one thing, and that's not Jesus. We've had to, I think, the latest count we have is 101 people blocked, and that's because they're just vile people. So, there goes another one. It's really sad. In the beginning, we tried to not block people, hoping... Yeah. In the beginning, we were hoping that if we just didn't respond to those people, that maybe they would stay on and hear the gospel message, but after a while it got so bad that we decided not to put up with all that vile, wicked stuff. So we just keep blocking them. And they don't realize what they are doing to themselves, that they are heading, heading for hell by their lifestyle. So we can only hope that someday they will listen that's right. That's right. And you know, that was, it's so true. Because when you're not born again, it's like the devil, the devil has people's minds blinded. And they're in darkness. They're in spiritual darkness and don't know it. And I was one of those people until I was 50 years old. That's when I first heard the gospel message of salvation. Yes, that's right. It is. The devil's total mission, 24-7, is to send people to hell. The Bible says that the, the hell was created for the devil and his angels, not for people. And since Satan, Satan has always wanted to be worshipped since he was kicked out of heaven. And so people do not realize that when they're not worshipping Jesus, they are actually worshipping the devil. And so the devil is getting what he wants, even though... I know there are some people who say they are Satan worshipers and so they must have to be doing it consciously but the majority of people do not realize hi there Hassan welcome this is my name right here Selma Ecker the majority of people do not realize that if they're not living for Jesus they're actually living for Satan and there is nothing in between there is a spiritual war going on over everyone's soul. It's a battle between God and Satan. God is love and he wants people to be able to go to heaven. Satan wants to take everybody to hell. So it is a real, actual, even though we cannot see it, in the spirit world, there is a war going on. The reason is, we, every person who's ever lived and will ever be born, is born with a sin nature. That is because of the original sin committed by Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, when they disobeyed God. From that time on, they, hi Leonard Kaplan, welcome. Before Adam and Eve disobeyed God, they were completely innocent. They didn't know anything about 
evil. But once they committed that sin and disobeying God, then they knew right and wrong. And that is simply what it means to have a sin nature. We know what's right, but we also know about evil, about wrong things. Because of them, everyone is born with a sin nature. And that's why we sin. And that is why Jesus said, you must be born again a second time. But it's a spiritual rebirth. And when that takes place, we are set free from that sin nature. And we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. So, I know, Sherry Lee, I, I cannot fathom it either. I, I just, I cannot fathom one person shooting another or being cruel to animals. And I'm not, um, I'm not like many people, especially in the United States today, they have elevated the role of their pets almost into being human. And they just dote on them and treat them like children, and I do not agree with that. Animals are animals. At the same time, I definitely believe they should be well taken care of and never mistreated. I think there needs to be a balance there, and people are out of balance with that, with their love for dogs and cats. So, that's my personal feeling, and I and Norman agrees with me. Um, so, because we are born with a sin nature, and because God is love, God wants people to be able to spend eternity in heaven. Therefore, Jesus came to be a substitute, to pay the price, to pay the penalty for our sins. It says in the book of John chapter 3, He that believes on the Son, which is Jesus, has Hi, honey. Has everlasting life. And he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Hi, Fabio. Welcome. Another weirdo is all I can say. Goodbye. <laughs> Norman Sherry Lee says, hey. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. So, sin has to be punished. Just like when a child misbehaves, a child should be punished in a loving way, not a cruel way, by the parents. And so it is sin requires punishment. Therefore God made a way for all mankind so that we do not individually have to suffer the wrath of God. Jesus took our place on the cross. Jesus was a God man when he was here on earth. Jesus never sinned. He never gave in to the temptations of the devil to sin. And he willingly went to the cross to take our place. He allowed the wrath of God to be poured out upon him. And his precious blood was shed on the cross. That was the sacrifice that God required. A pure, holy blood sacrifice. Jesus' blood was substituted for ours, for the sins that we have committed. Only Jesus could have done that because Jesus was a God-man. 
After Jesus suffered and died, he went to the grave for three days. And then he arose from the grave. That's called the resurrection. And then he ascended back to heaven. And that's called the ascension. And he's at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus did this willingly. He said, I have the power to lay down my life, and I have the power to take it up again. Hi there, Trin7410, welcome. So Jesus has already paid the penalty for the sins of everyone in the world from the beginning until the end. When we hear the gospel message and believe it and accept <coughs> by faith that Jesus is our atonement, that means he was our substitute. He took our punishment. That is justification. We are justified by what Jesus did on the cross. That means we are reconciled back to God to be able to be in God's presence. This all can be understood because of God's grace. God's grace is his power and his love and his favor towards all mankind, every person in the world. God's grace is his enabling power. Okay, Sherry Lee. God's grace is his enabling power power to help us understand an incomprehensible God. God is a spiritual substance. Hi there, D. Payan. Welcome. God is a spiritual substance. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's grace is ruling people giving them an awareness they need to seek after God, giving people an awareness that they need a Savior. And Jesus is the only Savior. There is no other way to heaven. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, It is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift from God. And it's through God's grace, by faith in Jesus Christ, atonement on the cross. When a person hears and understands that, thank you very much. Glad to have you. When a person hears that gospel message of God's grace and justification, and then the next part is repentance. Hi there, O8 Gersey. Welcome. This is my name right here. When a person hears this beautiful message of God's grace and justification, the last part of the message is about repentance. And I have, have that right here. Grace, justification, and repentance. And most people think that repentance is just simply saying, I'm sorry. But it's much more than that. Everyone feels sorry for things they've done at various times, but that does not save you. That does not give you eternal life in heaven. Repentance means that you agree with Jesus' atonement on the cross. You understand that he took your place on the cross, that he suffered the wrath of God in your place. So then, repentance is turning to the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists, in the Protestant. Thank you. 
in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, it means you agree to obey God's word in the New Testament, that you will live by it, that you will serve God, that you will live for Him. When you make that decision and you turn to God and say, God, I'm sorry, please forgive me for my sins. And you say, God, I will serve you now. I will live for you. Then the Holy Spirit of God actually indwells your heart. And the Bible says you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Coexist. Yes. Coexisting with your spirit. Norman's sitting right here. He said, yes, the Holy Spirit coexisting with your human spirit. Renewing that old evil mind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and renews our old evil mind, he says. That's what the Word of God does. Hi, Poland. Welcome. Great to have you. The Holy Spirit of God, it's a supernatural transformation. It's not something that you can do by yourself. You can change your mind. A lot of people say, oh, well, I converted to this or I converted to that. But that's just a change of your mind that you're going to believe something different. But to be spiritually born again is from God. It's supernatural. Wonderful. Glad to know that. So, once you are spiritually born again, then that love of God comes into your heart by the Holy Spirit. And that is when you begin to share with other people about Jesus being the only way of salvation. That is why Norman and I come on Periscope. Good. Because this gospel message is rarely heard today. There's, I'm reminded of a scripture verse that says there's a famine in the land. And I'm talking about a spiritual famine. The gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ is very scarce today. My main subject today has been about the commandments of men being taught in place of the gospel message. And I've mentioned some of the different religions, not all of them. The, the internet says there's about 4,000 false religions in the world. And if you don't believe me, here's a website. Here's a website. Watchman.org. And it tells about the Antichrist cults. And there's many, many, many of them in the world today. And, yes, people, as I said earlier, most people don't read the Bible. Or if they read it, they don't believe it. They just, as Norman says, they just pick and choose parts out of it. Many churches make their doctrine from certain verses in the Bible they take out of context. And that's one of the many ways that Satan deceives the people of the world. Satan is a counterfeiter. When you counterfeit something, that means you make something that looks almost like the real thing. And people are deceived by that. They think it is the real thing. And that's what a lot of these church doctrines are. They have some truth in them. They have some Bible scriptures. But then they'll either add this stuff they've made up or they'll take out some of the truths of Jesus and say we're not they don't apply to today. One of the worst 
things is that I have personally experienced in many of these churches today where the people say they're Christian, they say it's a Christian church, and but yet they will say every day we're going to sin in thought, word, or deed. That is a lie of the devil, and it just gives the people a pass for sinning. That is anti-Christ. The whole reason why Jesus came is to set us free from the sin nature so that we do not live a life of sin. That, yes, it is very dangerous. That is an anti-Christ doctrine. You cannot be a Christian and be a sinner at the same time. Otherwise, there was no point in Jesus coming and dying on the cross for us. The only way of salvation is to be spiritually born again through faith in Jesus Christ, through the atonement in His blood, and by repenting which is to turn your, you surrender your whole life. You have to surrender, hi Angela, you have to surrender your heart and your will and your life to Jesus and say, I'm no longer living just for myself, but I will obey God and His Word in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. I will surrender my life and allow God to use me for his purposes. That's what it is to be spiritually born again and to have the blessing of being able to go to heaven. Any other religion, any other doctrine, these commandments of men will just take people to hell. So, every day, Norman and I basically say the same things. We There's so many scriptures, so many ways we can approach it, and we do every, every day. We come at it with a little bit different angle. But, yes, but we always come back to the main message, and that is salvation through Jesus Christ alone. And one more thing, I talked about some of the false religions, and I'm, this, is, this is just good for a laugh. So I'm going to share this briefly about Scientology, which is also known as Dianetics. This is probably the goofiest cult on earth. It's founded by Ron Hubbard, who, believe it or not, was a science fiction writer. And eventually, yes, and eventually he decided he could make more money All right, there's no, number four or five today. So this Ron Hubbard guy decided that he could make more money by starting a religion than he could by selling these science fiction books. So, I've got to pick this up. And there's, uh, yes, absolutely, Sherry Lee. Uh, I have researched it. And uh, <laughs> it's so crazy. I'm going to read you just a couple of the things they believe. But Norman and I just, <laughs> we get hysterical over this because it's so funny. Ron Hubbard says that many of the problems we have in our lives today can be traced to our farmer lives. Well, that statement alone shows you that this is a man-made doctrine because it's anti-Bible. The Bible says we die once. Then here is some of the things he says can be traced back to our farmer lives. 
if a person has a fear of falling, it's because in a former life you were a sloth. Yes, it is ridiculous. In a former life you were a sloth and you got tired of falling out of trees. And so if you have this fear of falling today, it's because you are a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jeffrey. Welcome. <laughs> Another one is that people today who are vegetarians, in their former life, they got tired of being eaten by animals. And that's why they're a vegetarian today. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Uh, and another one is that people who are smokers today, smoke cigarettes or whatever, it's because <clears throat> in their previous life they saw all these volcanoes and the smoke ascending from the volcanoes. So that's why they smoke today. How's that for stupid? <laughs> <laughs> and there's thousands of people that believe this nonsense and they pay this church money, big money. And their teaching is that they can, they pay more money and they can ascend up to a higher level, you know, whatever that means. So I, I'm just baffled how people can believe anything so stupid. All right, Firewalker, if you want to continue to listen to me, you're going to have to tone down your language because I'm not going to put up with that kind of language. So this is, this is your warning. I would prefer that you would come back on and listen but I won't put up with that language. So, it's your choice. And the important thing is, Firewalker, I want you to hear the gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ. Because, hi Bootsy Wonder, because you alone will determine your eternal destiny whether it's going to be heaven or hell. All right, so long, Firewalker. It's a shame people don't want to listen. How do I feel about Pokemon Go? I think it is absolutely ridiculous, a waste of time, and people are committing crimes and getting hurt and chasing these phantoms. What a waste of time. A waste of your life. Norman and I recently <clears throat> were up on Main Street in St. Charles where we live. <clears throat> it's a historical area and uh, we go up there sometimes. We enjoy the shops and different things. And the last time we went up there, we were astonished at how many people were standing around in groups where there was Wi-Fi available and playing this stupid game. <laughs> so, now you know how I feel. <laughs> how do I feel about rock music? Oh, well, I don't care much they for it either. Put it, put it back under the rock. <laughs> Ah, did you hear what Norman said? <laughs> he said, put it back under the rock. <laughs> I agree with that. So, Sherry Lee, I'm going to... Ask me about, ask me about what we think about rap music. I have an answer. Oh, that. yeah. Norman has an opinion about rap music. Do you want to hear, do you want to hear what he says? Yeah. Ray Charles said... And I go along with him that rap is not music, it's yes, just talking. That's right. Norman said that he agrees with what Ray Charles said about rap music, and that is that it's not music. It's just talking, and that's the way I've always felt too. Yes, most definitely. Should be banned. So. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think it's horrible, and especially considering 
the lyrics of a lot of it is just just really bad. So, um, Norman, I'm gonna have you go in with me on this. I was talking a while ago uh, about pets that people, so many people have elevated their pets to what's Norman look like? You want to see Norman? He's right here. You gotta pay fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Norman's. You, you gotta pay to play with us, huh? <laughs> and we don't take any checks either. We're Christian people. We want the cash, man. <laughs> Let me flip you around here. All right. All right. Here we are. <laughs> Are you happy, huh? You gonna pay the fifty? <laughs> oh, don't leave. All right, let you... me get my glasses. In. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Sherry Lee Norman's coming back here. He's going to get his glasses, and then I'm gonna have him join with me on answering your question about the pets. So, uh, I, Norman, was saying to Sherry Lee about, I don't remember even now how I got there, but talking about how so many people elevate their pets to the status of Oh, yeah, the pets. People. The pet people. And, uh, and I said, <laughs> what's the white thing behind you? That, it's a little uh, air conditioning system. It helps cool this room. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I was saying that, uh, that I disagree that, oh, I know, Sherry had said she didn't see how people could be cruel to other people and to animals. And I said, yes, it's a terrible thing. But I said there needs to be a balance because a lot of people elevate their pets to the status of humans. And... Uh, and I disagree with that. Yeah. And so... Um, John 3, 16, what's that? What's John? God so loved the world. Yes, in Proverbs he says to love your beast. You're supposed to love your animals. Right? But listen, listen. Do you know that right now, if you Google on Google, ask Mr. Google... How many babies have been killed through abortion in the United States? Okay. Since Roe versus Wade 1973, I think it is. 71 or whatever. 58 million babies been killed through abortion by American women with the consent of American men who are a majority in the Senate and in the House and a majority of men in the presidency. They have allowed. Yes. Yes, that's right. You're right. Yes. I agree. Yes. So, when we talk about loving animals, an animal is an animal. But the American women, with the permission of American men, have enacted laws to kill their babies to abortion. 58 million in the United States since 1970. Have you ever said a bad word? You bet. You want to hear a story about when I first got saved? <laughs> That's a good story. You want to hear it or not? What do you think? I'm listening. <laughs> you want to hear the story about saying a bad word? Yes. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I feel crazy this morning. Well, anyway, I was 28 years old. We are not allowed to take it back. Why are no... no we are not to... allowed to take it back. The curse word? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, look. When I was 28 years old, I never read the Bible. Didn't go to church. No. no. Okay. Anyway, when I was 28 years... I'm 70 now. 7-0, right? Er 
okay? So. <laughs> and I'm living with this man. <laughs> I was 28, right? <laughs> why did you get... Why did, why did God create trees? <laughs> okay. for, for you to hug? <laughs> you know, some people can't make it with the other sex. They go to the trees. I, I have no idea. <laughs> But look, I was 28, right? So, I never read that. I just want to say that life is it's a sacred, sacred thing. Absolutely. That's you, you, you are, life is a sacred thing. Yes, and yes, and the trees is for the air to, to help Why? us breathe. Why, sure. Okay. But look, you got to be careful. You can go right down into religion about this. Sorry That's for okay. my English. That's ah, okay. you're doing good. Anyway, I was 28. This is a. I'm answering the question Have I ever said a bad word? You're so old. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get there one day and you'll be as Looney Tunes as we are. Hello. We're 70, she's 69. Cute looking baby daddy. <coughs> so anyway, to the story. I was 28 years old, right? I never read the Bible, didn't go to church, could care less about God, the devil, the Bible. I didn't care about none of it, all right? Do you have kids? Yes, I have seven kids. Five girls, two boys, youngest Lydia, 24. Are you still... Thank you. You're no, you Thank are still, you. Yeah. Still young and wonderful. You bet. You. Er, okay. <laughs> so. Hi there. Welcome. So I'm 28 years old. This is the answer. To, have you ever said a bad word? Okay. You guys are <laughs> old as dirt. You bet. <laughs> and we're pretty dirt. <laughs> we're the, hey, we're the big dogs. You're the little dogs. Until you get 70, you ain't got a thing on us. Hello. So anyway, I'm 28 years old. Have I ever said a bad word? So, I got shot with a 410 shotgun, and that's what eventually brought me into the kingdom of God. All right? So when I, I came to church, and uh, do you remember? No. Name? I don't Name. know. Name. Oh, and no. and, yeah, sure. I was there. Okay. Hello. <laughs> All right. So, back to the story, guys. You guys, get your fingers off them <laughs> buttons. All right. Will you listen? Hey, you millennials. Listen. All right. Stop chatting. Do you guys travel? Come on. Oh, we got you. Thank you for coming back. Boom. Gone. Bye. Okay. The 28th. I was 28 years old, gave my heart to Christ, right? Never read the Bible, didn't go to church, didn't know anything, except when I read the Bible the first year three times through, okay? So when I read the Bible, but I'd get so excited about the Bible, I'd use a curse word. You know, a little H word or the D word, you know, talking, I'd get so excited. So, <laughs> you got it? Wow. It's good. So, eventually... I had to go to people and say, I was wrong. Would you please forgive me for what I said? It made no difference if they forgave me or not, you know. And most of the time I said it to other Christian people. I'd get so excited because I, I cursed a lot before I became a Christian. Finally, you know what broke me of that? You know what caused me to change and not say bad words? This honest truth. I got tired of asking people for forgiveness okay so that helped clean my act up okay that's the answer to that question next <laughs> so for me my life was different I I did not ever use bad words growing up it wasn't in my home even though it was definitely not a Christian home but my family didn't talk like that, and um, so I just, I never liked hearing that kind of language, and, and I didn't use it, so I was just by the grace of God, you know, I was no better than Norman, but it's just the different yeah. lives that well, let, led. Yeah, let me clarify, 
my family was like her family. There was no cursing or anything in our family. It was after I became an adult. I'm talking about after I was I was 24, 25. And, you know, I just in the world. No, that's what I mean. It wasn't in the family. It was in the, my okay. own actions, okay? Okay. So, to complete uh, the thought about the animals. The animals. Oh, yeah, animals. Okay. Oh, man. Well, I just think it's a crime. Shame that way people, they'll kill babies, right. but they'll love animals. It's just, okay? uh, it's just, it's all out of whack. What's wrong is right. What's right is wrong. Right. It's out of proportion, Sherry Lee. That's, that's what I was trying to say. An animal cannot replace a human. Okay. Hi, Hi. Norman. It's Viper. Viper. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Viper. Hey. hey. <laughs> Welcome to the nut house today. <laughs> We're nutty for Jesus, amen? Yes, Bart, it's great to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona, amen? Holland. Good. Holland, yes. Bart. Hey. All right, my man, I want you to know, you got your shoes on or off? You got them on or off? How are you today? Hey, we're good. He's really wound up today, Bart. <laughs> I love animals, but I would never kill anybody. Well, I'll tell you what, here's what you need to do. I'm just going to offend you, probably. I wish that people, and that would include you because you're a people, I wish people would love the Lord Jesus as much as they love their animals. Because if you love Jesus, and if He was in your heart, you would have the compassion for fellow human beings that if they do not accept Christ as their Savior, the Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible, says they're going to either heaven or hell. I wish people had compassion on other people that are going to hell and to reach out to them and share the gospel message of salvation instead of staying home playing lubby-dubby with their little animals. Okay? That's my opinion. I think the, the love is about everything else. And it centers around the person. The person, I love to do this. I want this. I like this. I'm going to do this. This is my life. I'll do anything I want. I'll love him, but I'll do the da-da-da-da. And that's just rebellion. We can pray for... No way. No way. You cannot pray for salvation. All right? That's right. You cannot pray for salvation. If you think for one moment that you can pray somebody into the kingdom of God, you're absolutely wrong. This justification... How's that? Justification is only through Jesus Christ. If, a, if Listen, just play this out. If you pray... Let's say for your sister, if you had a sister, okay? Let's say you pray that God would save her, and you pray every day, every day, every day, every day. And your sister will say to you, how you doing? Oh, I'm praying that you'll get saved today. So if you get saved, the sister gets saved, that is. Now, what do you think that sister's going to start thinking? Well, it was your prayers that got me saved. And so what am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to pray for everybody. Oh, I see. Oh, he's hey. a Catholic. Hey, look, I used to be a Catholic. I was a Roman Catholic, Jesuit, taught by the nuns, Jesuits running the church. Okay? I have no sister. <laughs> well, that was an example. Okay, there's no way you can pray. You can't light a candle. You can't play to the, pray to the Immaculate Conception. No stations of the cross. No rosaries. No, none of that. But I'd love to hear you. Okay, good. Now look, Giovanni Ferrette in 1870, a man in Italy, created the doctrine that he believed he could never make a mistake. Never make a religious mistake. He was at a God level. Giovanni Ferretti in 1870 said he declared 
that this sinful woman named Mary was a god and you could pray to her. All the Roman Catholic people believed this guy, Pope Pius IX. Now what do you think if I told you, you said, well, I can never make a mistake, Norman Edgar, I can never make a mistake, and my wife's a god and you can pray to her, because I said so. What would you think? You'd say, Norman, you're wacky. What is praying? Talking to God. Simple. Hello, how are you? That's what you say to God. The Old Testament in the book of Genesis that God walked, took on a human form and walked in the cool of the evening with Adam, his first created out of the dirt. All right. So anyway, justification is only through Jesus Christ. Your prayers can't save a soul, can't do anything. How do you pray in the name of Jesus? There is no man who could be like God. That's right. Absolutely. But Pope Pius IX, the Roman Catholic Pope, in 1870 declared he was infallible. Today, Pope Francis, in religious matters, is infallible. Today, the people believe the Immaculate Conception that Mary's without sin and is a God you can pray to her. Nonsense. You strongly right. agree. That's why you're not a Christian. You're a Catholic. You understand? Roman Catholic are like Islam. All right? Islam, Buddhist, Hindu, Roman Catholic, Mormon. Now get this. And religious Christians are just like you. I think maybe he was saying he agrees with what you're saying. Oh. Thanks. Oh, let's hope. <laughs> you understand, religionists are religionists. They're everywhere. Religionists in the Catholic, religionists Islam, religion in the Protestant, religionists. They're just religionists. Jesus said you have to be spiritually born again, and that's the difference. That's the message we're telling people. I was born in a Catholic family, so you could have been born in an Islamic family, a Hindu family, a Buddhist family. You need to get saved. You need to listen to the gospel message of salvation through Christ. Then you will decide. It's up to you, not us. That's why we're on here it's for people like you who've never heard the true gospel message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. My family still go to a Catholic thing. They don't have nothing to do with me. All right? I'm 70 years old. For 40 years they have shunned me, okay? Yeah, Bart, I've, I've been waiting uh, to answer that question for you. Um, he said, can God take all the weapons out of the world? You bet. God, <laughs> God can do anything he wants to, but he's not going to do that. He, give, he allows people free will. We can believe anything, do anything. God is not going to take the weapons out of the world so people will stop killing each other. That's right. What God wants is for people to be spiritually born again, and then they will not want to kill another person. That's the only way the world will change. In the future, the Bible says, New Testament, you're going to turn your weapons, swords, into plowshares. You understand, it's a change of heart. Everybody says how everything's so terrible today, but imagine. Can't handle but take that away, people who can't take handle it. Uh, right, that makes no difference. Evil, they'll choke each other to death, <laughs> man. They'll choke each other. <laughs> you know, they'll pick up a rock like Cain and Abel, and they'll bash their heads in. You're never going to stop violence. The Protestant Christian Bible says, if you, Bart, if you love Jesus with all your mind, heart, and soul and love your neighbor, you'll love your neighbor like you love God, no problem. Now imagine if you did that, your neighbor did that, and everybody in your little city there in Holland did that. What if your nation of Holland would embrace Jesus Christ and love their neighbors, and Germany would love all their neighbors, and Asia, and everybody would get off this 
kick of religion and start loving like Jesus said. Everybody would love everybody. Everything would be good, wouldn't it? Jesus would be Lord. Everybody would be fine. And there wouldn't be any more wars. If everybody loved Jesus. Right. All right. But, you know, everyone thinks, now listen to this, everyone thinks that the Bible, yes, you read about in Revelation, the future destruction coming. I love you people. Hey, we love you more. Yes, Lord. Uh, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Look, in a Protestant, Protestant <laughs> Christian Bible has tells a prophecy about the future, the end times. Do you realize that's just a prophecy? If people repent, if people repent and accept Christ, you don't have to suffer like that. You understand? This whole thing of, of the prophecies that end time and destruction, evil in the world, doesn't have to be. If people would stop and repent, turn to Jesus. It's a choice. People choose to not love Jesus. People in Holland choose not to love Jesus. People in the United States choose not to love Jesus. People in Germany, the Middle East, Australia, they choose, I don't want nothing to do with Jesus. I'm leading my own life. I'm doing my own thing. They're fools. Well, they're lost, <laughs> spiritually <laughs> lost. Let's hope that they'll love Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, I think... We're going to call it a day. Hey, man, we got to go, man. We got to go shopping. All right? Lost in the bitter is wind. A better, is a better word. Ah, oh, lost. Yes. <laughs> All right. Bart, Sherry Lee, everyone else out there. And what's your name? Sn Snapper? Snapper. Uh, Snapper, maybe. Snapper. We really appreciate all of you who have listened and asked questions, and we <laughs> love every one of you. Amen. With, we love you guys. With the love of God that's in our hearts. And uh, just ignore Norman. <laughs> hey, we love you guys. Hope you'll come back. We rule <laughs> the baby boomers. We rule. <laughs> Thanks, Bart. <laughs> We will hopefully chat with you another day. Well, today's Wednesday. Norman will be back on in the morning. Uh, tomorrow I work half a day, so I won't be here. But we always look forward to chatting with you. We'll see you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, 9 o'clock Central Standard Time here in the U.S. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Tell your folks hello, everybody. <laughs>